Have you ever wondered what everything around us is made of? Well, the answer to that question can be found in the fascinating world of elements and compounds. You see, all the stuff we see, feel, and even the things we can't see, like the air we breathe, are all made up of these tiny little building blocks. Let's start with elements. An element is a type of pure substance that can't be broken down into simpler substances. Think of it like the most basic ingredient in a recipe. There are about 118 of these elements, each with its own unique properties. Now, imagine if we start mixing these elements together in different ways. That's where compounds come into play. A compound is a substance formed when two or more elements combine. It's like baking a cake. You mix flour, egg, sugar and butter and voila, you get a cake. Each ingredient is like an element, and the cake is like a compound. But here's the exciting part. Just like how you can make so many different types of cakes by changing the ingredients and their amounts, we can create a virtually limitless number of compounds by combining elements in different ways. These elements and compounds make up everything in our world. The water we drink, the air we breathe, the food we eat, the buildings we live in, even our own bodies, they're all made up of various combinations of elements and compounds. So how do we keep track of all these elements and compounds? Well, scientists have come up with a handy tool called the periodic table. It's like a big family tree for all the elements, showing us how they're related and what they can do. But before we dive into the periodic table, let's take a closer look at what elements and compounds are, how they work, and why they're so important. So, elements and compounds are the building blocks of everything we see and touch. So, what exactly is an element? Well, let's begin with a simple comparison. Imagine a building. This building is made from bricks, and these bricks are the basic building blocks that give the building its structure. Similarly, everything in our universe is made up of tiny building blocks known as elements. An element, in the simplest terms, is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. They are the most basic form of matter, and every single thing around us is made from these elements. From the air we breathe to the chair you're sitting on, from the water we drink to the stars in the sky, everything is made up of one or more of these elements. Now you might be thinking, how many of these elements are there? Well, there are 118 known elements. Some of these are naturally occurring, like oxygen and gold, while others have been created by scientists in laboratories, like Einsteinium and americium. Each element is unique and has its own set of properties. For instance, helium is a light gas that can make balloons float, while gold is a heavy metal that can be shaped into jewellery. But here's the kicker. All of these elements, despite their different properties, are made up of the same thing, tiny particles called atoms. And each atom of a particular element is identical to every other atom of that same element. Consider a gold brick. If you could zoom in really close to that brick, you'd see it's made of tiny, tiny particles called atoms. And every one of those atoms would be a gold atom. You could keep dividing that gold brick until you had just one gold atom left, but you couldn't break that atom down into anything simpler and still call it gold. In other words, elements are the simplest form of matter. They are the basic building blocks of the universe, and understanding them is the first step to understanding the world around us. Now where can we find these elements? Well, it's like looking for a new friend in a big city. You might need a map. And in the world of elements, our map is the periodic table. Imagine a giant puzzle, with each piece representing a different element. Just like puzzle pieces fit together in a certain way, the elements on the periodic table are arranged in a special order too. This isn't just any old puzzle though, it's a puzzle that scientists have been adding to for hundreds of years, and they're still finding new pieces. The periodic table is like a big city map, with different neighbourhoods for different types of elements. The metals live in one part, the non-metals in another, and the noble gases. They have their own fancy neighbourhood. Each neighbourhood has its own unique characteristics, just like different parts of a city. Each element on the periodic table has a special place, determined by its atomic number. That's the number of protons in an atom's nucleus. The elements are listed in order of their atomic numbers, from hydrogen with just one proton, all the way up to organesson with 118 protons. And just like how every friend you have has a unique name, every element on the periodic table has a unique symbol. Hydrogen is H, helium is He, and so on. Some symbols might seem a bit odd like Na for sodium or K for potassium, 
but that's because they come from the element's name in a different language. But remember, the periodic table isn't just a list of elements. It's a tool that helps us understand how these elements behave, how they combine to form compounds, and even gives us clues about elements we haven't discovered yet. It's like a treasure map, a city guide, and a family photo album all rolled into one. And the best part, there's always something new to discover. So the periodic table is like a big family photo of all the elements, each one unique, each one special, and each one playing a key role in the world around us. 